Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ranking Member Paul, uh, members of the committee. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate all the uh, kind words of, about GAO. We enjoy working with this committee and other committees across the Congress to make our government more accountable, efficient, and effective. Uh, the basic story with this high-risk update uh, is that there's been good progress in certain areas due to congressional and executive branch actions, but there's still serious, very consequential problems that need to be addressed that need more, greater attention from the Congress and the executive branch. Now, on the progress side, Mr. Chairman, you pointed out 16 areas improved, two to the point that we're removing them from the list. First is the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation Multi-Employer Pension Program. Congress appropriated funds. Uh, that program was slated to be insolvent in 2026. Now the insolvency date's been pushed off to 2051. Uh, the single employer program has improved, and so PBGC rates the risk very low of insolvency for either program for the next 15 years. So we're going to take them off the list. Now, just because they come off the list, they're not out of sight. So we'll still continue to monitor uh, what's going on with those programs. We're also removing the 2020 census. They were able to uh, contain for the first time the growth in, in uh, spending, the cost of the census. Uh, they successfully deployed an internet response rate this last time. Uh, and uh, they took all our recommendations and that of DHS to bring down cybersecurity uh, risk uh, to the census. So we're taking them off. Again, we'll continue to watch that. Uh, and whether or not the risk uh, build up toward the 2030 census. And if so, we'll add it back to the, uh, back to the list. Now, there's pro been progress in other areas. Congress provided stable funding, at least for the next five years, to the surface transportation area. It didn't solve the problem long term, so it's still on the list, but there was good progress. Congress passed Postal Service Reform Act that eliminated some of the financial pressures on the uh, well, Postal Service, but Postal Service business model is still not viable in the future. They continue to lose money, and that remains on the list as well. Uh, there were efforts made to pass a number of programs to build in climate resilience up front. So our high-risk area of limiting the federal government's fiscal exposure by better managing and building resilience in up front was addressed. Congress has provided some additional resources to uh, IRS, which uh, deals with our high-risk area of tax administration on that area. So good progress. Uh, Congress is to be commended for all the action that they've taken, as well as the executive branch in implementing some of these reforms. Now, we added three new areas to the high-risk list. One is HHS's leadership and coordination in responding to public health emergencies. Over the last decade, we've seen the failure after failure to be adequately prepared, and most recently during the pandemic. Roles and responsibilities need to be better clarified, better data, better communication, consistent to, and, and uh, clear to the public. Uh, so, and I fear we're not any better off prepared now for the next emergency than we were for the last one. So I wanted to put it on the list to highlight it uh, so that it stays in the public eye and with the Congress and the administration. We also added the unemployment insurance program. Uh, here, we've estimated that at a minimum, there was $60 billion of fraud. We're working on a higher end estimate now, uh, but due to significant fraud and improper payments, which it was occurring even before the pandemic at a much letter, less level, uh, and the need to reform the state systems. I mean, our systems at the state level are very archaic. Uh, they're not well postured. The program's not really uh, designed to meet the modern needs of our economy and our workforce uh, recently. Then we just are adding the management of the Bureau of Prisons. There's been problems in staffing, which has led to some concerns about inmate and staff safety, uh, and also uh, their efforts to evaluate programs that are attended to uh, uh, help deal with the recidivism issue haven't been very well evaluated and, and, uh, and uh, improved in those areas. Now, with the other areas remaining on the list, I'd like to highlight a few. One is cybersecurity. Uh, the federal government is still not operating at a pace commensurate with the evolving great threat. This has been something I've been focused on for many years now. And uh, 
Uh, the national strategy just came out here recently, uh, but there's not yet an implementation plan to be able to uh, implement that strategy so that they promised to produce one. It needs to be who's responsible for what, how much money do we need, how are we going to measure performance and improvements in those areas. So cybersecurity remains a, 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 a grave threat uh, to our economy and our national security and needs to be better addressed. Second is drug misuse. We've added that to a lot uh, 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 high risk list a few years ago. Latest 12 month statistics show over 107,000 people died from overdoses. There's been problems now, not only with fentanyl and, and opioids, but with a uh, uh, xylazine, which is a, a uh, tranquilizer given to animals being mixed with the fentanyl, which is causing uh, even more severe problems that we have. So we need a, a national strategy needs to be filled out, needs to be implemented successfully. We need more coordination with state and local governments, law enforcement, healthcare providers to deal with this issue. Uh, the uh, last area I'll mention is uh, drug uh, oversight of medical products and device safety. Uh, where FDA is still not in a good position to deal with potential drug shortages in the economy and also to, uh, to uh, have oversight over foreign production of medical products, whether it's pharmaceuticals or medical devices, most of it, what's consumed in the United States right now is produced in other countries. And FDA has to have more of an effective strategy for the global supply chain, not just uh, domestic production in the United States. So we're committed to continuing to work on these high risk areas to make greater progress. They're all very important to public health and safety or national security and can save billions of additional dollars. So I thank you for the opportunity to be here and I look forward to your questions.